William Wynn, Fly Corvair here. Today we're taking a look at a peat and pole landing gear. This is for our friend Earl Brown's peat and pole. You're looking at it uh, in an inverted form, sitting in a fixture that it was just made in. Uh, many of the items here uh, have been previously featured in written stories, but this will give you a good dynamic look at the entire assembly. Again, this is for a peat and pole air camper aircraft. As we take a look at it, it's obviously built of 4130 steel. It's TIG welded. The central feature is the spring struts here. Encased in these tubes are compression springs that provide the suspension to the uh, uh, undercarriage of the aircraft. It has rod ends on the end so that it will not bind, and it has a uh, steel uh, fittings that go on the fuselage. The MDO uh, wood here simulates the shape of the fuselage at 24 inches wide and the entire assembly has been built and checked together. Let's take a look at, at it from a different angle. There's a standard inch and a half aircraft axle. It can be used with either a wire wheel or a traditional aircraft wheel. The gear is aligned front to back so that it has very smooth action and doesn't bind. The fittings are put on a reinforcement strap of 4130 that runs on the bottom of the fuselage as a tension strap. It's part of the plans of the aircraft. If you take a look at the location of the axle in relation to the fitting, this follows the 1966 Corvair installation drawings on the peat and pole. Many people build their peat and pole with the original axle location 10 and a half inches back from the leading edge of the wing. This is, was designed for aircraft that did not have brakes. If your airplane has brakes, your axle better darn well be close to the leading edge of the wing. If you take a look at a lot of peat and pole accidents or off field landings, a lot of people put their airplane on its back. The first thing you can take a look at if the airplane goes on its back is it probably has brakes and has the wrong axle location. Again, in the 1930s, 10 inches behind the leading edge of the wing. All aircraft that you're going to see that are modern teal, tailwheel airplanes, uh, all your Cubs, Taylor Crafts, all of these aircraft, all position the axle close to the leading edge of the wing.